All right, hell yeah. So uh, we have aptitude test problems in physics, and this is by Krotov. I don't know if I'm saying those names right, but uh, cool. You know, and this might be one of my favorite problems. Um, you know, I've never done it before. I'm, I'm just, I'm just looking at it, and it just looks exciting because uh, all, all these problems, you know, what I mean, um, in this book, and then the other book, Problems in Physics, um, by uh, I. E. Iridov. Uh, uh, holy Toledo, you know, what I mean it's the the pro like half of the battle is just figuring out what they're asking and then setting it up Okay, so we have a helicopter takes off from vertical. So it's 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 on the ground It's not moving, you know, what I mean and, and then it's got an acceleration so cool and, and what what is acceleration? That's the first thing we come to is change in velocity change in time So let's just say one second passes, you know, what I mean and then uh, what's our velocity? Well, our velocity is going to be three meters per second because that's our change in velocity every second. You know, so if we have a, if we have an acceleration of three meters per second squared, I write it like this: three meters per second. You know what I mean? Per second. You know, what I mean? you you can even do it like this: a change of three meters per second. You know, you can totally spell it out. You know what I mean? It, it's a change in three meters per second for every one second, you know what I mean? So cool, one second passed, uh, our velocity at time is equal to one second, is going to be three meters per second, you know what I mean? And then let, let's get some, uh, I mean, one second, that's, I mean, we, we went from velocity zero meters per second in one second, we're now at three meters, but that, that's pretty decent. But what are we comparing it to? Free fall is uh, 10 meters um, per second squared. Uh, that's the acceleration of gravity and free fall. Um, but hell yeah, an acceleration of of, uh, of uh, one third gravity is pretty decent, you know what I mean? Um, so cool. So uh, and, and then what what meters per second? You know what what is that in miles per hour? Uh, you know just I just do times two. Uh, that gets you pretty close. So we're going to be uh, six miles per hour. Sometimes uh, you can remember it times uh, two point two five. Um, gets you a little closer. All right. So uh, but that, that that's that's the take home message for like. Uh, uh, this problem is like, man, we just we just want to every little every little thing they're talking about. We kind of want to have an understanding of what's happening because then we're going to relate all of them together. Okay, so uh, because we we have the 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 engine's going to shut off, but we're going to hear it from the ground, and the sound is going to die away. And we know that the speed of sound is 320 meters per second. So hell yeah, this this problem just gets instantly too much to handle. Okay, so um, and. And yeah, they said it starts with a, a zero initial velocity. We got that. You know, it's on the ground, obviously. Okay, so uh, in a certain in a certain time t1, the pilot switches off the engine. You know, what I mean, right now, just let's just guess. You know, what I mean, let, let's say let, let's say ten seconds. You know, what I mean, so uh, what happens in ten seconds? So if we're going to accelerate again, we can do that thing. Uh, so in ten seconds, how fast are we going to be going? Well, it looks like we're going to be going every you know thirty miles. 30 meters per second. Okay, and I don't know what meters per seconds are, so I'm just going to multiply by 2. Well, we're going 60 miles per hour. You know, and let's say if we did that times 2.25 thing and, and see if see if that's a pretty good representation. Uh, if my bill is $30 and I got to tip 10% like the olden days, that's 3 bucks. Uh, but if it's 20%, holy Toledo, I got to tip 6 bucks. But now now I'm going to have something extra, like 20, like a... 25%, so it's going to be a little more than 6 bucks. Remember that Remember that 10% tip was 3, so a 5% tip is a, is a $1.50. So a 20% tip is 6 plus $1.50. Um, that's going to be seven fifty. So we're going to have 67.5 miles per hour. And let's, let's, let's do this, you know, because people, people want kind of lessons as you go. And the factor label... It is just just such a cool thing, you know. What I mean, let's say I do have this. I want to go 30 meters per second, and cool. So now I just multiply it by um, something. Well, what what do what, what's our goal? Our goal is to get it into um, miles per hour. But you don't want to spell it like that. You want to spell it like this: miles um, per hour. Cool. So we want hours downstairs and miles upstairs. So now we need to convert meters to miles and you you could just do that you you could know that a 1600 meter run you know four laps around a track 
is uh, one mile, basically. But it's not 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 quite, not quite, you know, because you got to go 1609. That's a really good one to memorize. Now let's just do that right now and get on with life. And so we're going to go uh, 1600 meters. And then seconds. How do you convert seconds to hours? And this is one you just need to know. You know what I mean? Just 3,600 seconds. If you don't know where that's going or where that comes from, well, let's spell it out for you. So how many seconds are in a minute? We're going to have... Oh, 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 oh. And uh, uh, this was in 1,609 meters. That was going to be one mile. See, now miles is up top. We can cancel meters. Hell yeah. And uh, how many, uh, how many, so 60 seconds is going to be one minute. And then uh, 60 minutes is going to be one hour. So cool, seconds cancel, and now I got minutes in the basement. And now minutes cancel, and I got hours downstairs. So cool, if I do this, and, and then, now what the hell I was saying times 2.25? Well, basically, look at this, look at this. I'm going to take 30 and then multiply by this number. And what is this number? Let's do that first. So it's a, uh, well, and then, and then let's spell out this. 60 times 60, heck yeah, that's that 3,600. This comes up a ton. This is how many seconds in an hour. It's one of the only ones you should memorize, but hell yeah, that's how many seconds are in an hour. Um, and then we're going to divide that by 1609. That gets us pretty close. And look at that, 2.237. So that rounds to 2.24, and who cares? It's 2.25 uh, times 2. And the really who cares is it's just times two. If I see three meters times two is six, I'm going six miles an hour. That's how my brain's... If I really want to um, hunker down and be like, well, I, I can figure out, you know what I mean? But yeah, for this one, if I'm going 30 meters per second, yeah, we can do that 2.25. Uh, you even just do a 2.2. Do do uh, um, what's twice this, that's 60. And if my bill was 30 bucks, what's a 20% tip? Six bucks, so 66. 66 miles per hour. So all those methods get you closer to the answer. And that's kind of the strategy we use even for this problem. Cool, yeah, because we, we just, uh, you know, and that's what we're doing right now. We, we just chose a time of 10 seconds. I mean, that, that sounds reasonable. Um, and because acceleration, you know, what's a check on reality? Because uh, this, because the other check on reality is like, you can't have permanent accelerate. If this problem says, hey, your acceleration is three meters per second, well, it's actually, um, uh, you know, uh, it's not, like, let's say you're at a stop sign. And then, sure, you're going velocity zero miles per hour. And then, uh, and about maybe, I don't know, five seconds later, if you drive kind of slow, uh, you're going to be going 25 miles per hour. You know what I mean? So you, you had an acceleration, but your acceleration was only for five seconds. If you kept accelerating for at that same acceleration for 10 seconds, you'd be going 50 miles per hour. Holy Toledo. And if you kept doing that, let's say you accelerated for, uh, uh, I mean, five, tw 10 seconds total. Let's say you accelerated for 20 seconds total. Well, damn, you're going to be going 100 miles per hour. Now, in, your, in whatever car you drive, could you ex keep accelerating at the same rate for 40 seconds? Hell no. No car's going 200 miles per hour. Uh, you ain't watching this video. You're too cool to watch this video if your car goes more than 200 miles an hour. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, that's a check on reality of this problem is there's going to be a point where, no, nah, there's, a, there's a time limit. Uh, that, so, our guess of 10 seconds might be pretty good, but 66 miles per hour straight up for a helicopter, well, that, that might actually be, and we're, we're talking just straight up. We're, we're talking this helicopter is going straight up. So, I, I would say, I don't know. That I just, I just don't think a helicopter... Can 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 actually? I, I have no idea. I think 66 miles per hour for a helicopter to go straight up sounds crazy. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously they can hover, uh, but just a straight up velocity of 66 miles per hour. I, I know it can't be 120. That would that would be insane. That that would be a. Um, I don't know. That 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 would be my high end. I, I would say for sure this can't be greater than 50 to 60 meters per second. And then so this time frame can't be more uh, than 20 seconds. So yeah, so our time frame is going to be 10 seconds was, seemed like a pretty good guess. 20 seconds, holy, that's a high end. So that's kind of what, what I do for problems because now, now, now you have this range where you can just throw some values at it and, and see if... Uh, Alright, so what, what's the next thing? Um, so yeah, let's say 10 seconds goes by. Uh, and we have an upward velocity of 30 meters per second. 
And that, that's the other thing. Because your helicopter is going up and then you shut off the engine, uh, it's still like throwing a rock into the air. And, uh, you know, let, let's say a rock goes up and then stalls right here and, and then goes right here. But uh, um, let, let's say it's already got some velocity right here. Well, uh, and, and if we're saying like, hey, this is where the engines get cut, well, we still have upward velocity. So that rock is going to take gravity and gravity will slow things by 10 meters per second every second. You know what I mean? So, uh, so e even, even right here, so we, we can kind of just get a general gist of what's going on. After 10 seconds, we're going 30 meters per second. En engines get cut. And uh, how, many, how, how many seconds will we be until we just run out of velocity upwards? Well, uh, gravity is going to take away 10 of these meters per second every second. So it's going to be 3 seconds up, uh, and, then, and then we're going to be stalled. Okay, cool. And then, and then let's say three seconds later, so six seconds total, well, we're going to be right back to that same spot with, with now a downward velocity of, of what our initial upward velocity is. So another three seconds, we're going to be going 30 meters per second downward. You know what I mean? So that, that was six seconds. And um, so now even from this is like, well, when are we just going to hit the ground? Because that's the other thing is it says... At, uh, at at a certain point, um, uh, see, and, and then th that's why even this it says from takeoff uh, at the point of takeoff the sound of the engine dies at thirty seconds. So and uh, we know that if the if the helicopter is kind of way up in the air and then shuts off its engine. Um, and now we have this speed of sound that takes a while to get to us, you know, on ground. So that happened, let's say, we're going to call that uh, zero seconds. You know what I mean? Just instantaneously the, uh, the motor shut off, the pilot shuts off the engine. Okay. And um, if, if, that, if that helicopter is 320 meters uh, above the ground, I don't even know what the hell 320 meters is. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, I, I do know 1,609, so we're uh, 320 divided by 1,609, we're uh, 0.2 miles. You know what I mean? Hey, I, 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 can, I can kind of visualize that. Um, or, you know, 320 meters, that's pretty close to 400 meters. I, I, get, I get what a track is, you know, or people running the 300 hurdles. You know what I mean? So 300 meters on a track, we kind of understand that. So thank God, at least, we have track and field in America. Um... To, to, so we have some sort of representation of what meters are. Okay, but if that's the case, if we're, if we're 300 hurdles away from that helicopter and it's above us uh, and it shuts off its engine, it's going to take that sound one second to get to us. So if that helicopter actually is just hovering, and then so check out this scenario. Let's say it's just hovering, has no upward velocity, no downward velocity, uh, shuts off its engine, well, now it just shut off the thing that's uh, holding it. And for this, we, we, we have to totally assume that this, the instant that engine gets shut off, those rotors like just come to a slamming stop. Because even that might take a couple seconds for it to power down. And you're still, you know, as long as you have some sort of blades moving, you do have uh, force, um, you know, I mean, air molecules are, you're going to have lift. And so, but I guess at that instant, we're just going to, so in our scenario, it's hovering, no velocity, shuts off engines, and it takes one second for the time to get to us. Well, that's one second for this thing to fall out of space. And this is my favorite problem, you know what I mean? Because we go back to, hey, I jump off a cliff, whether it's a rock or you, you know, because you're cliff jumping, um, what happens in one second? Well, we know that acceleration is 10 meters per second, per second. That's going to be our change in velocity. Our velocity is zero right there. And then so uh, one second later, and we're just going to go t is equal to one second, our velocity is 10 meters per second. Cool. Um, but now th th this, this is where any of these problems, th this is the graph that I would draw. This is the graph that I do draw. Um, because we are all very aware of driving. We love driving. So we're... we're uh, so this is the scenario where you're going to drive for an hour, but you're going to do something kind of unique. You're going to start at zero, go to 60 miles per hour. And then over the course of one hour, you're just going to slowly build up speed. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it's unrealistic, but at least you can visualize it. 
And so now the question is, like, how far did you go in that hour? So what we do is we come here and slice, you know, in half. And maybe, maybe for some, like, that's not visual. You're just like, well, look at the area down there. It's bigger in the areas. But it's like, no, 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 no. You know what I mean? You're, you're going, uh, uh, uh. I don't know, yeah, maybe, maybe you would actually need to prove this. If I slowly increase my speed from 0 to 60, uh, you know what I mean, uh, you know, you actually have to use calculus to prove that. Um, but it's the easiest representation, just visually, we should be able to see that, hey, that's 30 miles per hour. And we, we have a rough estimate, because e even if this graph looked like this, and this was like 30 miles per hour. You started at 30 and you ended at 60 over the course of the hour. We can also visualize that. The average velocity is going to be 30 plus 60 divided by 2. So this equation, you know what I mean, I think is just so overlooked. Like uh, I've forgotten it and just like, what? You know what I mean? This, this is just one you have one, you know, in your back pocket going into every problem. Especially because you don't want to be using calculus. You just want to be using common sense. You know what I mean? All right, so uh, for our scenario, uh, you know, we, we just cut the engine. Uh, the sound took one second to get to us. And the question says, like, what's the velocity? And in this scenario, our velocity is going to be down. And, uh, well, we, we, we know that velocity. If that was the question, what was the velocity uh, after it cut the engine in our scenario? It's 320 meters up. Cut the engine. Takes sound for one second to get to us. Uh, it's going to fall out of the sky like a rock for one second, just like we would jumping off a cliff. And uh, it would have a downward velocity of uh, 10 meters per second, but towards the Earth. Cool. And, and what, what does it say? Determine the velocity of the helicopter the moment when its engine is switched off. Oh, so that, that's a different one. You know what I mean? So, uh, so from, from what we said is we're just assuming that, hey, this thing is just at 320 meters. It's hovering in space. And uh, we cut off the engine. Uh, it took a second for the sound to get to us. And now we kind of know what its velocity uh, was. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the crap thing about these problems is like, man, they 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 kind of ask things. Yeah, they kind of ask things that are like above and beyond. You know, we're just like, oh man, this is gonna it's gonna be like too much to handle. Okay, so um, yeah, they want to know determine the velocity of the helicopter at the moment when its engine is switched off, um, and uh, and check this out. So we already know something about it. Determine the velocity of the helicopter at the moment when the engine is switched off. So uh, before it's switched off, it's just going up. It's going up at this acceleration, you know what I mean? So even at 10 seconds, we're going to have uh, uh, 30 meters per second. But now, but now, uh, <clears throat> oh, one more thing. So in this scenario, like, hey, I think a better question for our, for our little setup, it's hovering, shuts off the engine, takes one second for the sound to get to us. Hey, how far did it drop out of the sky? Because so, that, that's the other thing. Even even with this one, cool. We found our average velocity, and let's let's say this new scenario. We're going 30, starting at 30 miles per hour, and so this, this is just this whole thing. And then we're uh, we're still going for one hour, but we're slowly increasing our speed from 30 to 60. Our average velocity uh, is going to be 45 miles per hour, and we did that for one hour. We went 45 miles. Hell yeah! And, and see, well, we had to use the average velocity over the course of that time to find that distance. So same thing here. Our velocity is zero. One second later, it's 10 meters per second. Cool, our average velocity is five meters per second. And we fell for one second. So what's our distance? Well, average velocity, five meters per second. Our time of fall is one second. And it is where I break out units. Units are the equation. Or, but maybe you don't know what to do with these two things. Do you multiply them? Do you divide them? You know, I do this, meters per second. And, and, and I'm not doing this for you. I, I literally just don't want my brain to do any work at all. You know what I mean? So, uh, cool. So we multiply those two together, and we get meters. And so uh, 5 meters per second times 1 second is 5 meters. So this, this uh, helicopter w would be 5 meters. Uh, yeah, so that answers whatever the question I wanted to ask. Okay, so now we really do have to throw a, a quick check on reality. Because for whatever reason, if 20, 30 sec, this time frame just seems really high. Because re remember how I was saying it's just like, well, like, uh, it isn't a high end for this helicopter that uh, it, it takes off and accelerates at 3 meters per second. That means its, it's velocity is going to change every, um, every 3 seconds. So let's, let's just say at the point of takeoff, 
That's going to be time zero, point of takeoff. The sound of the helicopter dies away at 30 seconds. So let's say we didn't know anything about how sound gets to us. Okay. Uh, we're just going to assume that after 30 seconds, that helicopter shuts off. Well, damn. You know what I mean? So my check on reality might have been wrong. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, of 20 seconds, of going 120 miles per hour vertical, vertical acceleration of 100. Uh, is this, say, going horizontal or vertical? You know, probably make more sense if it's going horizontal. I, I just, because that, that's the first check I ever do on physics problems. Of just like, I've always wanted to get, like, get the aha, be like, nah, that's a suck problem because it, it has no representation of actual physical reality. Um, a helicopter takes off along the vertical. Cool, and it's accelerating for three meters per second. Now I'm so curious. Uh, I'm gonna have to do this video in two parts because I gotta go somewhere, and usually I do three-hour videos. Um, but I, I'm totally in that break gonna see what's what's the vertical speed, uh, what's the whatever you call it. You know what I mean? Climb rate. I I don't know what they call it in aviation, but that what's what's uh yeah like uh. Like yeah, just what what's, what can what what can you, your vertical speed be? It really doesn't matter what if you're close to the Earth or or up in the sky, your vertical speed can still be the same. But your vertical speed near uh, sea sea level, you know, near near the surface of the Earth, hell yeah, there's there's a lot of thick air. You know, I mean, once you get the hell up there, there's you're you're just you're just um, you know what I mean, uh, the air is wispy. Uh, okay, so, uh, cool. So I think we actually have a pretty decent, uh, so yeah, so we're just going to say we're going for 30 seconds, and we're going to go 3 meters per, so we, we, we already, see right now we just exactly know what our velocity is going to be. Every second we're going to increase our speed by 3 meters per second. So we're going to be going 90 meters per second, which is hella. 90 times 2.24 you know, is 200 miles an hour straight up, you know what I mean? I, I just don't think... That that's possible, um, but 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 you know. So now now the question is like, well, um, sound doesn't instantly get to you. So if uh, if you're way the hell up, because even at 320 meters, it's going to take sound one second to get to you. Whoa. Okay. So well, let's say let's say you're 620 meters up. H how long is it going to take sound to get to you? It, well, sound's going to travel. If it traveled here in one second. Zero, 01 it's going to go zero, 01 zero, 02 or you know me whatever 2 seconds to get to there so okay so uh, so now we we can't just say after 30 seconds uh, the engine cuts and then sound instantly travels to our ear and we're going to say hey uh, the in, it, it it had a velocity of uh, you know uh, 90 90 meters per second you know cuz we 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 don't we don't that's not true. And like right now, you could be like, well, why, why, why don't I just use the kinematic equations um, to help me solve this? It's just because the average person isn't going to do the integration, uh, you know, on acceleration to get those equations. And uh, just, just having this, that acceleration is constant, it's just a fun way to do it. So uh, let's say, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's say we go up for 20 seconds. You know, we, we said 20 seconds was our high end. What would our speed be? Well, it's going to be 60 meters per second, which is super fast. It's like 120, uh, 60 times 2.24. It's 135 miles an hour, you know, a straight up. I, I just, I, for whatever reason, I just don't think a helicopter can do that straight up. Damn, that is impressive if it can. I guess they're really light. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm comparing everything to an airplane, which is the only thing I've been in. And those things are heavy as hell, and you just have to s skip across the, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, the atmosphere like a stone, you know what I mean, you just go real fast, um, horizontally. Okay, so, uh, cool, let's, 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 uh, settle down, and let's, uh, so we're gonna go, in 20 seconds, we're gonna go 60 miles per hour, um, uh, yeah, meet, sorry, 60 meters per second. So at 20 seconds, we're already going 60 meters per second, and at zero, at, you know, off the ground, we're going zero. So what was our average velocity in that time? Well, our average velocity was 30 meters per second. And how long did we do that for? We did that for 20 seconds. So even just right now, you're like, whoa, uh, we're, we're up at 600 meters. Whoa, that, that's exactly what I set it up. It's going to take two seconds to get to us, which, you know, doesn't really reduce things a lot because that then that time is just 22 seconds. So at takeoff... 
we're going to go up 20 seconds, shut off the engine. It's going to take two seconds for that sound to get to us, and we're going to clock on our stopwatch that the sound of the engine stopped after 22 seconds. So even like right now, we can kind of use the guess and check method. Like let's let's go up. I'm just gonna, I'm actually just going to guess 20. Ooh, I want to say 27, but we're going to go 26 seconds. So we're going to change our velocity by 3 meters per second every 26 seconds. So 26 times 3. Our, our speed is 78 meters per second uh, after 26 seconds. That's when we're going to kill the engines. We want to know the height that we're doing that at. So uh, our average velocity between 0 and 78 is, uh, is 39. And we did that for, so we went 39, average velocity of 39 meters per second for 26 seconds, so 39 times 26. Uh, now we're up to uh, 1,014 meters. Now we're going to divide this by 320, uh, divided by 320, and it's going to take 3.16 seconds for that sound to get to us. So our 26 plus 3.16 isn't quite 30 that's why i wanted to kind of guess 27 but i thought i was going to overshoot so see e even right there that that's like the that's like the light bulb goes on you're just like whoa like you you guessed a little bit low but then just instantly i could guess pretty much the right answer you know because I mean? we we have a general gist of what's going on and uh it's it's a little bit harder like speed is real easy you know what i mean oh hell yeah i'm going 45 miles an hour average speed I can go 45 miles, um, but you know if you're if you're jumping off a cliff and you're clocking you're clocking your buddy and they're falling for two seconds, you know what I mean. I don't think anyone knows how fast you hit the water. You know I mean wouldn't you know even if you knew the acceleration is 30, and the reason is even America acceleration of 32 feet per second per second. We don't know what a foot per second is, you know what I mean? So, acceleration... Uh, <clears throat> All right, hell yeah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow your mind right now because we're going to do factor label method because it would be really useful if we knew acceleration not in 32.2 feet per second per second, but in, in, in some number in miles per hour per second, you know what I mean? That, that's still a check on reality. We still have miles per hour... And then we're going to divide that, you know, by another time. So we have we have a distance divided by time, distance divided by time, and then divided by, you know, every second. That's going to be our change in miles per hour. And uh, I, I had to quickly, oh, I had to quickly think, like, what's the answer to this? And no, and I remember it's like 22. I thought it's like 22, maybe even 22.5. Who knows? But we're so now we're going to go 32.2 um, feet, uh, feet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we're gonna go 32.2 feet per second, and uh, and 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 this is per one second. But this downstairs, we're gonna leave alone. Like we just want to convert 32.2 feet per second into miles per hour, because then we'll have a value that's miles per hour per second. Cool. So uh, again, seconds to hours. That's gonna be 3,600 seconds, one hour. And now feet. To miles. Oh, this is easy. Just 5,280 um, feet in one mile. So the factor label message says, hey, I can cancel out feet. That becomes mile. Cancel out seconds. And that becomes hour. And uh, we're going to do 32.2 times 3,600 divided by 5,280. Cool. Oh, I, was, I was a little off on the 22 point something, but you know, it's exactly 22, but I at least knew it was 22. That's pretty sweet. So yeah, you could just say it's exactly 22 miles per hour per second. Now, man, I can't imagine how many physics like or, or engineering students like just don't have this in their pocketbook. Because anytime you're doing an acceleration problem, you're just like, well, if I'm in free fall, so the next time you're at the cliff, you know what I mean? Get get out your phone with the stopwatch mechanism and see if see if they have a fall of two seconds. Then then you know you're at a decent cliff. One, you're going 44 miles per hour, and then the other is like, well, uh, your average speed. Then you can go back to Newton and be like, well, if if I had it was two seconds, um, my gravity. I guess Kepler. You know what I mean? Uh, force of gravity, but uh, hey, you're you're going to be going 20 meters per second after two sec. Oh well, no, yeah, you want to do this one because you're going to be that. That is the nice thing about metric, 
because after two seconds, if I'm going 20 meters per second, I know I started with zero meters per second. So my average velocity is 10 meters per second, and I did that in two seconds. So I went 20 meters. Cool, and now you can figure out what 20 meters is, um, and that's, that's significant. Uh, yeah, is isn't isn't it? It's multi It's more than sixty feet. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So what was it? And then this. I, I'm so bad at this. I'm just gonna say it's point times three point three. Uh, I, I don't know any cool way to remember meters to feet very accurately, but I think three point three is pretty darn good. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna assume that's right, and we're going. That's a, that's a high cliff to jump off. Um, cool. All right. Let's go back um, to our scenario. That I mean. So, uh, heck yeah. So we, we were basically there. So we kind of know, and we, and we can get a little more accurate. So let's, let's say that we're going up for 26.5 seconds. So that's going to be our seconds, 26.5 seconds. We're going to increase our speed by 3 every second. Our velocity is going to be that. Our average is just divided by 2. And then we did that for 26.5. That's our new distance divided by 320. And this is our time. So now we're going to have... Uh, 26.5 plus 3.29 seconds and if we add that to 26.5 we get pretty damn close and we we get to 30 seconds and that's what on the ground it says hey you notice the sound dies away at 30 seconds so let's just use that setup and say we're close enough and now we want to answer the problem determine the velocity of the helicopter the moment when the engine is switched off Oh, this is an easy one. You know what I mean? I thought it would be cool to be like, hey, uh, when you notice, uh, when I, I like, I like my problem better. Like the second you notice uh, the engine, um, or like a after 30 seconds, the sound of the engine goes away. The question is like, uh, like how uh, how high is the how high is the helicopter off the ground? I think that's a better. Um, question. Okay, so let, let, let's do that one too. And uh, but yeah, we we already know the, the velocity of the helicopter at the moment the engine switched off. We said it was going to be like twenty, well twenty six point five seconds. That's the moment that engine cut cuts off, and uh, and times three. So we have a velocity of seventy nine point five meters per second. But it's just straight up and times two point two. 480 miles per hour, I guess. I'm hoping. I, I'm, I'm going to be so looking forward to knowing that helicopters can vertically lift and have a vertical speed of 180 miles per hour. Or I'm going to be hella excited if my check on reality and I'm questioning this. You know what I mean? I'm just like, whoa. You know what I mean? That, that's, that sounds intense. Um, or I just did not know that was a, a physical characteristic of a helicopter. You know what I mean? I knew they could, you know what I mean, not fall fall to the earth, hover and lift, but just not with the hell of, of a lot of speed. Um, sweet. So uh, now I think we're almost done with this one. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, because you you because the the other the other aspect of this is just like, well, what what how how do we get the actual answer? You know what I mean? Well, you run through like what we did. Um, well, I, I, I don't know. That, that could be just a, a separate video or if I want to throw another couple hours at this. But yeah, you want to use, you want, you want to figure out what you're doing with the numbers and uh, why you're, uh, yeah, there's two, there's two aspects of there. One is just like, well, what did you do, what did you do to the numbers to actually, um, you know, figure out that check on reality. And then whatever you did to the numbers is the equation that you're using. So then you can go back and like craft an equation. Uh, but this one um, has a continuity where like, hey, like we we're, we're choosing this input time and uh, we're, we're outputting, you know what I mean, this, this time for sound to travel to us. And our continuity is that uh, the time to accelerate upwards plus the time for sound to reach us is going to equal 30 seconds. So at the time to accelerate, once that expires, the engine cuts off and then the then the sound has to reach us. And that's what the continuity is, you know what I mean? Um, but cool, I mean, I, I think 
no one cares about how, no, I think everyone cares about how to solve them that way, and then how do you do that fast, but I could, I could care less, you know what I mean, that, that'll just come with practice, um, but I like to, you know, figure, f throw numbers at it, and then, and then craft your equation, and, and I probably have to go somewhere this evening, so we might come back to this one, um, and my page is getting messy, but what I, I still want to answer my question. If we chose 26.5, and the cool thing about doing this way is like now you, I, I can just really spit out like what's going on. So if I, if I go up for 26.5 um, times 3 is my velocity, uh, um, 70, 79.5, I'm going to store that as alpha v. And then let's do the problem just one more time. Um, my average velocity is this. And, uh, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to say, um, oh yeah, yeah. And then, so I, I did that for multiplied by 26.5. That's the distance I traveled. Sound divided by, um, divided by this 320. This is the time for sound to reach us. Okay, cool. And then, so in that time for the sound to reach us, this thing is just a, a rock. It, it, it's the scenario where we threw the rock up from the ground and then we're saying, hey, at this time, it's got some upward velocity, but just like a rocket, it's not, it doesn't have any rocket propulsion. Uh, gravity is just wanting to slow it down. So we got to a velocity um, alpha v. So we got to um, 79.5 meters per second. That, that was our velocity, 79.5 meters per second. Every second, gravity is going to kill that by 10. And, and basically, uh, it took sound three seconds to get to us. So let's just subtract um, 10 for every second. You know, we do that three times, and we get a velocity of 49.5. So I would say that's a quick check on reality, that the answer to this problem is close to 49.9. Uh, but we, uh, um, we're, we're going to have that 79.5. And uh, the time for sound to get to us was 3.29. So it's going to be, it's going to slow down just a little bit more. So we're going to go 79.5 minus that alpha time, that 3.25 times gravity, which is 10. Most of these, even, even most of these books, uh, especially for exams, they're always going to use gravity as 10 just because uh, sometimes the exams don't have calculators or, or they, they, they want you to get the, the number, uh, you know, just in whole numbers and stuff. So that's that's what I'm going to do for this. And uh, but even even just right there, see how we said we were at 79.5 meters per second for our vertical um, uh, speed, and then we said every second we're going to lose 10 meters. And I did that. You know, I just subtracted 10, then subtracted 10, then subtracted 10. Well, I had a 0.29, so then I'm going to subtract maybe like three. You know what I mean? So there, there you go. So we had 79.5 minus 10 minus 10 minus 10 minus 3. Oh, oh, bummer. Um, minus 3. And yeah, we get something like 46.5. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, so cool. So I, I would say, yeah, 46.5 meters per second. And I'm pretty damn confident in that. That is pretty close to the actual answer. Now we know that 26... 26 seconds was an undershot because we have to go, I mean, 26.5. We, we have to go like maybe 26.75 seconds. So we're, we're going to have a little bit more speed. And, um, but, you know, it's going to take uh, the sound to get to the ground uh, a little bit longer. But the speed that we gain is going to be greater than the time. Um, well, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I actually don't know what variable is, is limiting in that situation. Um, Cool, cool. And, and let, let's do that. You know what I mean? So 26.75 times 3, that's going to be our velocity. Divided by 2 is our average velocity over that 20, and then multiply by 26.75. That time, that's going to be our distance. Divided by 320, that's going to be our alpha t now. And now we're going to say alpha t plus 26.75. Perfect. Now, now we overshot. So cool. That, that's the other thing with problems is like you can undershot, undershoot, and then overshoot. So this was our undershot. Now we're going to overshoot and say that uh, we're going, um, uh, well, well, let's go. So 26.75 was pretty sweet times three. That's going to be our velocity at, at the top end. 
Uh, did I already store this as alpha t? I did. Um, and so, and, and now we're going to take that and we're going to subtract um, gravity times that time. And that's how much uh, uh, velocity we're going to reduce. And we're going to go 46.7. And so, hell yeah. So now I know that the answer is pretty close, uh, probably just in between, but maybe even closer to this 40, uh, 46.7. But hell yeah. So now we have a check on reality. And we did the problem without out letters. So you know what I mean? So I think I might actually be done with this one. We'll, we'll see. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll see if I come back to it later tonight and throw some letters on. But I'm pretty confident that we got the right answer. And the way that I did it, you can ask a lot of different questions. You know what I mean? Uh, like I can vary things a lot. Uh, but... It not as good as an equation. You know, I mean, if you do throw an equation at this um, uh, for this scenario, then then you can vary things. You you could vary this time frame. You could say, hey, I'm going to just 20 seconds, like I thought, and uh, and then and then you could figure out uh, the velocity. But anyway, um, I, I think I'm really satisfied with this one, and uh, so thanks for joining me. And guess what? That's a video.